Hello friends! Today I am shopping my stash based on the painting The Roses of Ella Gabalus and this is a fragment of the painting. I'm going to show the whole painting right now. The painting itself depicts a feast during the rule of the Roman Emperor Ella Gabalus and he was quite an eccentric man, more on that in the actual video. During the feast, he actually showered his guests with a rain of rose petals that fell from a fake ceiling and some guests almost drowned under the roses and stems and flowers and everything. So I figured this would be a very good occasion to do a pretty pink look, look with some gold green accents. This is the Yemoja palette from OPV. I kind of dislike the packaging. This is its inside. Um, what I plan to do is I want to use Ayao, maybe Oyo, Osun Echo, some Yewa maybe, and then this green shade Oko over here. The issue with this palette is that I don't use it very much despite the quality being really great. And that's because the just the pan size, hand for scale, is huge. It gives me a bit of anxiety. And also the packaging doesn't feel very inspiring to me. So I might end up depotting this. For my base, I am going to use the Clarins Bon Beauté Eclair, which is honestly the most useless product I have in my collection. I don't feel... It does anything and I want to use it up so I'm putting it over here. For foundation I'm going to use my summer foundation. This is the Clinique Even Better Glow and it's the only foundation that matches me at the moment. This is in Cian Tan Alabaster and it's got a sheer dewy finish that I absolutely love. For concealer, I'm yet again using my favorite, the Catrice Liquid Camouflage. It's my holy grail. I think I'm on like the, uh, I don't know how many tube of this. Because Alagabalus was quite the eccentric bougie emperor, I'm going to use my Dior Gradient Finishing Powder. And this is in Gradient Pink, Rising Pink actually, 001. For blush, I am using uh, the Kiko Milano Water Flower Blush in 03 Pink Shiver. And this is how it looks like. It's got a really pretty pink gradient and like this flor floral pattern that I feel goes really well with the theme of the painting too. For highlighter, I'm going to use a pink shifting highlighter that I've not used in a while. And this is the Sephora Collection Highlighter in Romantic pink. This has got like um, an, a sort of icy base with a pink flip, but I don't use it very much. I don't know why. To add a bit of panache to the eye look, I'm going to use the Neve Cosmetics um, Pastello Casual Eyeliner. And this is in Swindle, which is a very pretty gold shade. I need to sharpen this before using it at all. Eyelash lashes to keep up with the bougie theme. I'm going to use the Lancome Monsieur Big, which is amazing. It gives me length, volume, and lift with curl, but it is dummy expensive. So I'm using a combo of two products. The first one is the ColourPop Lippy Sticks in Lumiere, and this is the shade, pretty pink, a bit cold for my preferences regarding this look so i'm going to add the nyx duo chrome gloss in spring it on and this is um pink with a gold flip so basically this is how the final look is going to end up looking okay with all of these set and done Let's proceed to actually talking about the painting and gossiping about the depravity of this particular Roman emperor. Be Hi friends! Hi! My name is Mia and this is my virtual vanity, a place where we both love makeup and we're quite critical of it. And today we are doing another installment of my art-inspired Shop My Stash series. 
where I either do a look inspired by the colors in the painting, as is the case here, or I do a look inspired by the actual makeup that the painting seems to wear. Today we're going to talk about the Roman Empire, which is fitting because I'm actually half Italian. And a lot of conservative Italians yearn for the um, return of Rome eternal. It surprises me that they do because the Roman Empire, as much as it was great and filled with art and many conquests, was also a place of great political strife, intrigue, and lots and lots, and I mean lots, of gay sex. So it's, um, it's surprising that conservatives would want such a regime to come back. This painting is The Roses of Elagabalus by a painter called Lawrence Alma Tadema. What's interesting about this painting is that Lawrence, for months on end, while he painted, he actually imported roses from France because in um, his country of origin, I believe England, roses weren't in season at the time. And the painting is, is huge, it's like a couple of meters tall. It's truly an amazing feat of artistry. The painting depicts one of Elagabalus's excesses, and that is a banquet, banquet? A party in which he showered his guests with tons of roses pouring off from a fake ceiling. And as far as excesses go, that was really mild and wholesome. But let's not get us ahead of ourselves. Let's start uh, getting ready and I'll tell you a bit, a lot. We'll gossip about the Emperor Elagabalus. I'm going to start with the most useless item in my collection and this is the Clarines uh, Beauty Flash Balm. And this is supposed to brighten, tighten, whatever. It promises a lot. To me, it seems like it doesn't do much of anything. So Elagabalus became an emperor in the third century and that was all thanks to his grandmother, which frankly was a top tier Slytherin. I'm using the Catrice Concealer, which I really like because it's quite uh, medium to high coverage, it's very hydrating, I am dry skinned for reference, and it doesn't seem to settle or crease, um, it's been my holy grail for years at this point. But you know what wasn't a holy grail for the Roman Empire? Elagabalus. So I mentioned that his grandma was top tier scheming manipulator, queen of political intrigue, really. What happened was the following. So, the emperor before Elagabalus had the emperor before him killed in a coup and took the, tr the throne. Now, when you are an asshole and you basically take everything from someone, you would want to make sure that there are no family members to try to take revenge. So he basically took this whole guy's family and transplanted them into Syria, just so they could be really, really far away from him. Now, Ayla Gabalus' grandma and mom weren't really happy about this situation, because they were part of that family. So they started thinking of ways in which they could take back political power. And that included young Elagabalus, which at the time was 14, so he was basically a teen. Like imagine your little brother who's like playing Pokemon Go or whatever it is kids play these days. Imagine him on the throne of the biggest empire the world has seen and think about how well that would go. Yeah using one and a half pumps of the Clinique foundation. What I really like about this foundation is that it is quite sheer and luminous and it goes off my face evenly during the day after like six or seven hours of wear. It doesn't feel like I'm wearing makeup, but I do feel that even though this is the lightest shade in the winter, it won't match me. So 14 year old Elagabalus was in Syria, a very devoted high priest of the local variant of Baal, the god Elagabal, 
which obviously wasn't part of the Roman faith, but Romans were quite lenient with that sort of thing, and I think that contributed a lot to their political success, because when they assimilated a new territory they didn't try to impose immediately their lifestyle and their beliefs, they more or less accepted uh, the population's current lifestyle and tried to mold on top of it Roman values and beliefs. So Elagabalus was honestly a zealot, he really was very devoted to this god and he was really well liked. So since the current Roman emperor wasn't liked and Elagabalus was in a sense related to the previous person and he actually bore a striking resemblance to him, his grandmother more or less said that, oh, he's the illegitimate son of the previous emperor that came before you, so he's more worthy to the throne. She had the previous emperor assassinated and placed Elagabalus on the throne. As I said, he was 14. That, of course, will prove to be a huge mistake because 14 fucking year olds should not be in positions of power because their brains haven't even developed yet. Like, what are we even talking about? Elagabalus from the very beginning kind of proved that he wasn't going to listen to proper imperial Roman norms. He took with him 2,000 miles along from Syria to the capital a huge golden statue of Elagabalus. When he arrived, he honestly showed how much of a religious zealot he was. He didn't adopt the local cult, as it was fit for an emperor to do, so he didn't adopt the Roman gods, you know, Jupiter um, and whomever else. And instead, he started forming this cult of Elagabal right there, with sacrifices and festivals and all sorts of lavish ways to show his devotion. People weren't very pleased, but it wasn't that big of an offense yet. It was kind of like the first nail in the coffin, and the coffin eventually ended up having many, many, many fucking nails. I'm going to start working on the eye look, but I kind of want a lighter transition shade to deal with the high pigmentation of the Yamoja palette. So I'm taking the blush and I'm going to dip my shadow brush in this particular portion over here and adding it all over the lid. I really like working with blush as eyeshadow when it's needed. It kind of ties the whole look together. And you know, I mean, I paid for it. Why should I not use it in every single way I could possibly want to use it as? The thing to look out with when using a blush as eyeshadow though is that they do tend to be more powdery. Going to take the shade Echo and place it in the outer and inner portion of my eye, starting to work out a halo eye. So imagine this, you're 14, and because you're 14 you have no sense of self-control, you have now immense power at your fingertips, and unfortunately a great deal of 14-year-old hormones. Now, I'm not gonna slut shame, because everybody can do what they want, but frankly, Elagabalus was a lot. And he was doing a lot. This kid found himself with great power at his fingertips, and he was also really, really horny, all of the time. Or at least I would think he was, based on his behavior. He started taking up numerous lovers, aside from a couple of wives, in order. I mean, not once at a time. I mean, he didn't have multiple wives at a time, but he did have a wife and multiple lovers going on at the same time. And he also gave his lovers high positions in the political um, landscape, which didn't really please a lot of people because nepotism is one thing, but putting the guy that sucks your dick in a political position that he has no qualification for because he actually was a charioteer before, not a good move. It was okay up to a point, but one of his wives ended up being a Vestal virgin. Now, in case you didn't know, the cult of Vesta was very beloved in Roman times, and she had these Vestal virgins, which were priestesses, and they weren't supposed to marry, do anything sexual really, until they were like 30. And while Elagabalus kind of liked one of them, and he just 
plucked her out of the temple and married her and when asked yo what the fuck are you doing this is really forbidden this is sacrilege this is blasphemous his reasoning which uh, flawless logic really went something like this well what union is more holy than that between a high priest and a priestess match made in heaven of course people were really unhappy because he basically desecrated the temple by just taking one of the vestal virgins and um deflowering her to take the shade ayao and put it in the middle and of course he ended up divorcing her and marrying someone else and someone else after that and still having numerous lovers and it was said that he basically prostituted himself in the palace uh doing all sorts of nasty sexual shit in the palace in public view he once cross-dressed as a woman went to the forum where all of the prostitutes were and basically ordered them around like he would an army and basically told them to do all sorts of sexual acts to win his favor basically you have this man that's a boy in essence he was like 15 or 16 when he did that cross-dressing known to have a very promiscuous reputation when he should it that had desecrated a temple by fucking one of the priestesses and then he goes to the biggest brothel in the empire and he just theatrically stages all of the prostitutes to do things to him to each other to passerbys just for his amusement yikes I'm going to take the shade oko and place it on my lower lash line he also had a lot of orgies and extravagant parties and some of the things in the parties included and were not limited to showering people with rose petals until they almost drowned like in the painting um, offering his guests gifts such as money clothing sexual favors a dead dog once serving his guests fake food and laughing when they broke their teeth on it I'm going to take the shade Ogun and place it in the middle of the lid and in the inner corner so of course nobody was pleased with Alagabalus the religious caste was not pleased with him the political class, the senate was particularly pissed with him because you see Alagabalus was a bit of a feminist he put his grandmother and his mother in senate which was unheard of they were among the very first women to be part of the political roman class so they were pissed at him for that and eventually even the praetorian guard got really angry with him because of his indecent behavior now his grandmother noticed all of that and he was like okay i'm not gonna have a dumb fucking teenager ruin my plans for world domination we have to do damage control what she did she knew that elagabalus's cousin was really well liked so he convinced elagabalus to take him under his wing and basically groom him to be his successor now elagabalus kind of had an inkling that things will go wrong for him because an oracle once told him that he will have a violent death and ever since he basically took to wearing only the finest clothing because of course he wasn't going to die in bad clothing like a peasant moreover he had all sorts of poisons and knives on him because he would have rather just kill himself than have a bad death he also had a tower built which was extravagant and lavish out of which he imagined he would throw himself off when the time would come just he basically wasn't afraid of dying he really just didn't want to have a bad and ugly death also starts noticing that more and more people including the praetorian the senate everybody else starts to favor his cousin instead of him so he tries to have his cousin killed which um fails to materialize because everybody else got a whiff of that plot and so he and his cousin were called in front of the praetorian guard and his grandmother and everybody else under some sort of pretext so it wasn't like oh we know you're gonna plan to kill the person that we want to put in your place and with the uh, color pop lippy sticks and lumiere i really like this formula um 
I think I'm going to grab some more colors when I'll feel the need for more lip products but this pink is a bit too cold for the look that I have on my eyes so I'm going to warm it up with the Spring It On Duochrome Lip Gloss from NYX which is really nice I really like it and I also like that it's not particularly sticky and even though the shine of the lip gloss goes away quite fast the gold sparkle stays well I'm done with the look and Ella Gabalus's reign is also done because when he gets called in front of Pret the Praetorian Guard, that's the end. He eventually gets killed by the Praetorians in front of his grandmother, who was honestly just looking at it. No reaction. She did not give one single fuck. And eventually his cousin was put on the throne and every statue and painting of Elagabalus was defaced. Or well the ones that the Romans could get their hands on. The facing was a cruel post-death punishment. It was a way to ensure that the person being punished for their misdeeds would go away from public memory. Of course, we still have uh, gossip, because I can't call it anything else, from various historians about Elagabalus' exploits and life, and I'm of course going to leave some links down below of interesting articles with more details than I can supply. This is the final look. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I have a few more planned and most of them are collabs, so I'm really, really excited about that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a wonderful evening, morning, second breakfast, whatever it is where you're from. Bye!